So even though most tile guys will tell you otherwise, you can definitely tile over tile. It's not for everything. It's not a guaranteed home run, but there's a lot of things that you can do. You can save a lot of money. You can save a lot of time and you can get on to your next project. So if you listen really closely, you can probably hear the tile guys screaming at you through the computer that you can't do this. And I get it. I understand why they're saying it, but it's mostly liability. So when a tile guy comes out to your house to bid a job, they're going to be looking for a guaranteed win. They're not going to be looking to do something that they hope will work and might work and should work. They're going to be looking for something that they know is going to work. And I'll just tell you, the only way to guarantee a good tile job for 20, 30, 40 years is to take everything down to the studs and start off. Whether it's for your walls, your floors, a backsplash, a shower surround, the only guaranteed win is to rip everything out and start over, start fresh, so you know exactly what's behind there, you know exactly how sound it is, and you know exactly what you're putting into it. Anytime you tile over tile, you're really dependent on what was done before, which you really don't know. All of that's hidden behind the wall. The idea of doing this is not tearing that stuff apart. You don't want to have to look at behind the wall. You don't want to have to mess with it. You just want to slap some tile on there and get on with your next project. I get it. And there's a number of different ways you can do this, and you kind of have to feel it for your situation yourself. So the number one thing to look for is that you have a solid base substrate to work with. You don't want any loose tiles or any flexing of the walls or the floors or any movement anywhere in there. It's got to be a good solid tile base to start with. So the first way you could accomplish this, which is my least favorite method, is sanding the existing tile. And that's mechanically giving a surface that makes it a little bit easier for the thin set to bond to. And you get a rough sandpaper and you give the tile a really rough coarse go over and you try to just hope for the best that that thin set is going to stick to that tile. So the idea here is tile is stuck to the floor with thin set. So thin set bonds to tile. It bonds to the bottom side. So why can't it bond to the top side and bond tile to tile, right? Well, the problem is with like a porcelain or ceramic tile, they put a coating on the top. And in order to be effective, you really got to sand that coating off. And that's not an easy task to do. So while in theory that's true, in reality, with something like a porcelain or a ceramic tile, you've got a hard coating on the top surface that's really not designed for anything to stick to. That's one of the benefits of tile. And so you've got to sand through that and give a mechanical rough surface to that top surface so that when you adhere some thin set on it, it has a chance to stick to it. But the main problem here is you have no guarantee. You're just kind of guessing how much you sand, how rough it is, how much you've sanded off, if that, is that going to be enough and if it's going to stick. And the only way you're going to find out if it's good enough or not is at the end of the job, two or three days later, is the is the new tile adhered properly. So if you want to do this method, I highly recommend you doing a test first. You just find a small area, give it a good sand how you think it should be, and stick a tile down. Give it a few days and come back and see how it is. Sometimes you can knock the top surface of the tile and get a, see if it's hollow, or you can just try to chip it off and see if it comes off easily. If it's a real bear to come off, you did a good job. If you didn't do a good job, it's gonna pop up real easy. Even a little flathead screwdriver, just give it a little uh, pops up pretty easy. So you'll know. Now the second method to consider is securing a backer board mechanically to your old tile. So this is basically sticking some hardy board or cement board down, screwing it down through your old tile into the floor or the studs or whatever it is and building on your new tile on top of that. Now if this is for a floor application, it's still recommended you take a scratch coat of thin set and apply it on your old tile and then lay your new backer board on top of that. It doesn't really have to adhere all that well because that's not the point. The point of this is to fill in the little gaps and valleys between your backer board and your tile so that when you're walking, it's much less likely to squeak. You still have to secure it down with screws just like you always would. If this is for a wall, you should be fine just securing your backer board with screws just like you normally would. Now obviously screwing through tile isn't the easiest thing and it does add some extra thickness and cost to your overall project, but it's a good option to consider if that's not a concern to you. The tile application after that would be just the same as any other tile project. Now the third thing I've done is to take a waterproofing membrane like a red guard and apply that to your existing tile. That gives a good surface for the new thin set to stick to. Modified thin sets are usually designed to stick to waterproofing membranes. So you're not going to have any issues with your thin set sticking to the waterproof membrane. The problem with this method is the waterproofing membrane is not always going to stick to your tile. So if you're going to consider this, you really need to do a test piece Find a small area of your existing tile, apply two to three coats of this stuff, give it a few days, and come back and see how it is. The waterproof membranes don't do as good of a job sticking to a slick surface 
like a porcelain tile. But if it's something a little rougher like a stone, you stand a chance. But the method I would recommend you consider first is to use a tile primer. Mappé makes a product called Prim Grip. It's available at Lowe's and I'm sure other tile outlets. I'm sure there's other products out there by other manufacturers, but that's the one I have experience with because that's easily available. So it is designed specifically to stick to tile surfaces. You can look at the product and it will tell you what it can stick to and it leaves a membrane type surface that has some grit on the top of it that the thin set will stick to. This is exactly what this product is intended for. It can also stick to other surfaces like plywood and linoleum, but you really gotta be careful with the stiffness of your structure before you consider something like that. So once you apply the Mappé Prim Grip, you can either do a waterproof membrane on top of that or you can tile directly on top of that as you see fit. Obviously a waterproof membrane wouldn't be required in something like a foyer or a backsplash. So if you're doing a shower, you're gonna to wanna to consider a waterproofing membrane. And if you have an existing waterproof membrane, your old tile, and then a new waterproof membrane, you have a really high increase of trapping some moisture and creating a mold situation between the two waterproof membranes. Now, if you're sure there's no waterproof membrane behind your existing tile, you can, you can consider adding a waterproof membrane here. But you're gonna to wanna to bring it your entire wall surface all the way to your drain. So now before you tackle this massive project of yours, why don't you check out this massive deck that we built? It might be the next thing that goes on your list.